Cache County Oral History Project, an interview with Reverend Lee Waddell, interviewer Clarice Weaver, June the 5th, 1981. Now, Mr. Waddell, uh, Reverend Waddell, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about yourself before we started talking about church history. Uh, did you grow up in this community here? Now, what's your full name? Ira Lee Waddell. Ira Lee. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, when, do you care to tell me your age? When were you born? <laughs> January the 20th, 1904. 1904. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your mother and daddy's name? My daddy's name was Joseph Waddell. Mother's name, Lucy Catherine Waddell. Lucy Catherine. Um, and they were Ash County people. Ash County. All, has your folks been in the mountains here since uh, the Waddells, since, since they first kind of settled this area? Born and raised. Uh -huh. My mother was, uh, she was born and principally raised in Ash County. My daddy was born and raised in Ash County and lived in Ash County, died in Ash County. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you married an Ash County woman. What was her name? Dora. Who was? Howell. Dora Howell. Did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, two brothers. Two brothers. Arthur Waddell, Gilbert Waddell. Mm -hmm. Well, how many children do you have? I have three. Three. Boys or girls? Three of the three children, two boys and one girl. Two boys and one girl. Well, that's nice. Um, now, where did... Growing up in this, now I can, I, let's see, you're right near the Virginia side, aren't you? We're in a, about a mile of the Virginia line, mm -hmm. Grayson yeah. County. And wh where did you go to school when you were? Here at Little Helton. Little Helton. That school is no longer there, is it? No. Was that the, no, is that what they call it, the Little Helton? Little Helton School. Uh -huh. Was it a big, pretty big school? Or? Well, they, uh, I just don't know what the attendance was after that it had become to be a two-room school. But when it was one-room school, as it was when I went, they, uh, they had about, uh, I think, 80-some on road. And it was 59, the last day of the school, when this picture was took. Well, that's a pretty good crowd of youngsters, isn't it, together out here? And no. Are there that many youngsters nowadays in this settlement? No, there's not. No, not that many of them. Um, yeah, and these all walked. Yeah, walked, and I bet you didn't, what, you packed your lunch, I guess. That's right. But yes, I am. How many months were you going to school? Was it a six-month school in those days? No. At the time I started in school, it was four months. It had, before proceeding that, was three months. Mm -hmm. And then, after we got the new building, the two-room school, six months. Well, now that the new building you were talking about, is that, did the community build it, or well, do you uh, recall? The state community uh, I don't know what uh, I don't know what percent the people whether the people paid into it or not but it was put built by the county mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well in those days they had to have schools as best they could in walking distance of all of, as many of the children as they could didn't they? yeah I guess that kind of determined the where the school was going to be. I guess before that, did they have them in some of the churches? Did the church serve as a... No, we had no church school at that time. And they didn't have the schools in the church? The county schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you uh, you were a Baptist minister. Yes, Is it missionary? Missionary. Or missionary Baptist. And when were you ordained? I was ordained the 23rd day of July, 1939. 1939. Mm -hmm. Now, where was that? Where were you ordained? I was ordained at Pleasant Home Baptist Church. At where? Between here and Grassy Creek. Is the, ch is the church there now? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 
uh, now when you were growing up, did you want to be a minister or was that later on in life? No, not until I was burdened or con until I come under conviction of ministry. And when you were older person? Yes. But you went to church as a little boy. Oh, no, I went to church. My mother carried me to church. <laughs> now that was, uh, you've seen a lot of, of changes in the church buildings as well as uh, probably the church activities that were going on. Could you give me any kind of a comparison of, um, say, the first church buildings you went to and this maybe some you pastor now? Well, uh, my father was a Methodist in his people and he was a member of Greenwood Church just on up about a mile up 994 that you turned off up to come here near the Virginia line and uh, he attended belonged to this Greenwood Methodist Church and I attended church my father took me to church my mother was sick and not able to to walk or go, and that's all we had traveling then. Yeah, yeah, that's Or horseback. Right. And I attended church with my daddy there, and attended the Methodist church, Sunday school, and was brought up in the Methodist church, the Methodist, taught in the Methodist Sunday school. And in a revival there in about 1916, when we were 16, I was saved in the revival of the The Greenwood Methodist. Preacher John Green was an evangelist. This is Southern Methodist here, and he was from a branch of the, off the branch of Northern Methodist. He was preaching this revival when I was saved. Now, what was his first name? John Green. Uh-huh, Preacher John Green. Uh -huh. And that was in 1906. Sixteen. Well, uh, I was converted at the age of thirteen. Well, now the churches were not quite as elaborate in those days. The structure were they? they the church buildings they weren't quite. This, as this was a mighty good church building, nice was building, it? yes. But I bet it didn't have a kitchen in it like some no, of some of them. No, just the auditorium. Uh, uh -huh, just the, the church just, building, mm -hmm. that's right. No basement. But some of the, some of, the, of our even our country churches have a very uh, modern kitchen. Oh and, yes, uh, that sort of thing. That's true. So, well, now how about the old revivals that they had? Uh, uh, were they a lengthy thing, or did they have a set time to start and a set time? I mean, by that did they begin and say we're having a revival for two weeks, or did they just go along as they? There was a set time to start, but there was no set time to quit. <laughs> as long the as the Bible was maybe not under two weeks, day and night. Day and night too. For three, four weeks. Really? You uh, did the people? Well, I'm sure the people had time to go out, but uh, it's a little different uh, nowadays. You well, so many people the are working. Churches and revivals. At night was full, standing across the back and up the aisles, and in the daytime, the church would be mostly full of people. Well, now, did they have regular service, uh, sermons in the daytime, or was that a, for the children? The same as revival. Uh -huh. Eleven o'clock preaching service, just the same as night. Hmm. And the people went. And uh, people was interested, and they got something when they went. They did, shout. Did the shout? What? I think if you had shouting, shouting. Oh, well, I'd love to see it as it was in uh, the altars full of Christian people shouting. People say the missionary Baptists used to minister, go there and just yeah, be with the Methodists and revivals. And 
They they work together. Work together. They did have some wonderful revival. Yeah, that there was no Baptist church here until 1923, and that church really was meant something to this community, this country. You mean the Greenwood? Yes, Methodist Church. When did it uh, when did it close? I mean, as a church. Well, it's been closed uh, somewhere around two years, I guess. Well, uh, why, why the change, do you think? What, what well, I just couldn't say. Uh, I was talking with the circuit rider that was here I guess he left this charge about three years ago. I saw him the other day and was talking to him in regard to the church and the work of the Methodist people here in the little hell, hell community. And she said he believed the cause and the, the Methodists of losing uh, in this community and dropping off the church and having to be discontinued with us. They sent young ministers up here that was not too well qualified for carrying on the church work and dealing with the country people. Mm -hmm. Could be. And the people lost interest because you couldn't relate these to them. Young preachers didn't uh, wasn't sufficient to qualify to carry on work with mm -hmm. this type of people, country mm -hmm. people we yeah. got here. And I believe that's right. Uh, now, when you're talking about the old, fat, old timey revivals you had that lasted, uh, did the preachers come from, say, one settlement, another settlement, and did they stay in the, with some of the people, or did I mean they, they didn't have cars, well, did they? Unless it was close by, they stayed in the community. Um, most of our preachers wasn't. They'd ride a horse back with preachers was the distance was such as they could reach the church by horseback. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as a, as a they'd have to ride horseback home at night. Uh, well, when now when you had the, you mentioned the shouting and that sort of thing when you. When this, uh, say it ordinarily probably held about an hour, or did sometimes you go on much later than? Well, it was on to the interest. If it was interest, the people at the altar. You stayed till they were. They stayed till they was ready to leave. Mm -hmm. So, they, in uh, other words, you could have stayed till ten o'clock. Oh yeah, or 11, whatever. Or whatever they wanted you to uh, stay, and pray with them. I forget now, I was just thinking, I believe it was at the Mount Union Baptist Church here on Big Heldon. We seen a big revival there some few years ago. The interest was such, people under conviction, we didn't leave there left at 12 o'clock. <laughs> That's it, getting just about right, sister. <laughs> It's a good thing you wasn't on horseback. Then you'd have been. I guess so. Many of them was tra preachers travel. Got in home after midnight years ago. Was most of your revivals in the fall after the harvest? Or? Well, back then it, it was mostly in the fall and winter, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have as many revivals as you hold now. Maybe. My, most of the time, about one revival a year, maybe run more. But it uh, it counted. There was results. Well, did you ever have to worry about rowdies <laughs> and young boys uh, coming and disturbing uh, your oh, revival? Um, not necessarily. We shouldn't say. So we always blame it on the young people, but it might not have been young people. Well. Once in a while, 
they'd uh, somebody maybe get a little noise or something inside mm-hmm. church, maybe push her out to call her attention or something. But uh, there was no disturbance outside, much hardly ever happened or anything like that. No fighting or anything. Uh-huh. Uh, trouble is now, they don't come to disturb. <laughs> they just stay away. Don't? We'd be glad as ministers <laughs> to worry and bear a whole lot with them if they would come. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, after you had your revivals, uh, you said the the Methodist, uh, the Baptists came and worked with the Methodists uh, yes, throughout the revival. Then did you have a baptize, did the Methodists baptize in the creek in those days too? They did some, yes. Did the Baptist preachers assist them with the baptism or? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think they did. I think they did their own baptizing. Now they usually had the bab- baptizings after the revivals, whether it was the uh, cold weather or not cold weather, didn't they? Yes, I baptized in December. You have? Yes. We baptized right down to the mouth of this creek on the 4th of December. It broke the ice from the fence rail and kept it pushed back while we baptized. Well... I didn't hurt nobody. I never even heard them tell of anybody much as even sneezing. <laughs> Did you, did you have more than one to baptize? Oh, yes. I don't remember how many, but we had quite a bunch of candidates that day. Well, you were the one who had to stay in there long, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Me and the preachers baptized us, but we didn't suffer with cold that day more than our feet got pretty numb. Is that a... so We baptized in the same place on the second Sunday in May. Me and the same preacher. Not coming the nearest to freezing to death that day. I would have been my... There's snow back here on this horse's mountain. Oh, yeah, melting. That was about the 11th, 10th, 11th day of May. Well, the, the old timey, what I've gathered in talking to different people, the old timey mountain preachers that made this, you know, work this country and on up, well, I'm down until now, too. But I'm talking about uh, the way when, and in sickness and everything like that, they were on the go all the time, weren't they? They'd send for the, they sent for the preachers in sickness and they were in oh, trouble. Yes. Oh, yes, the preachers said. But uh, the preachers then had to work. They must have them on farms, had their farm working to do. Most preachers maybe would have two churches, maybe some four. And uh, they, we didn't at that time have any full-time pastors. And they didn't have the time, of course, to visit throughout the country among the people like ministers do today. But they visited what they could. And one day that was needed, they was always ready for service. I've always thought it must be rather hard on preachers to have to conduct the funerals of some of their neighbors and so many of the relatives even, and, and it's such a sad occasion for them all, isn't it? Uh, now, when, you're, when you were growing up and going to the Methodist church, you said, now the Methodists in this area were called the Shouting Methodists, were they not? Free and Baptist, Shouting Methodists. <laughs> well, they ought to got along well, hadn't they? Well, the Methodists did get along. Baptist, oh, of course, the Baptists in here that I told you to mm-hmm. nineteen twenty-three, but they got along in harmony. 
And uh, uh, I've always loved the Methodist preach people and preachers, and they've visited in my home since I lived here, and, and they've always treated me very nice. I preached in the Greenwood Church after I was come to be a minister. Okay. While we're talking about the lineup between the Baptists and the Methodists, I've always noticed, sister, in all of my travel, wherever you see a Baptist church, you see a Methodist church, <laughs> and they're never and never sitting very far apart. Well, come to think of it. They must have been pretty good friends all the way down the line. <laughs> I wouldn't know it then. Yeah. What can they say? Now, the in West Jefferson Baptist Church sits over in the Methodist Church over there. You take a North Wilkesboro, it's down the county on the hill. Baptist Church over here and the Methodist Church over here. Well, in Warrensville, I live in Warrensville. The Baptist Church and the Methodist Church are almost side In Winston-Salem, the First Baptist Church sits here. And just up the street, on the other side over here, sits the big Methodist Church. It said it cost a million dollars when it built. Hmm. Well, then, must must be something to that, then. Um, you've seen a lot of changes in this area, I'm sure, haven't you, here? I've been. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, when you were young, I don't suppose this road out here was hard. No, it wasn't hard topped when you were a little boy. Oh, no, this, uh, no, we didn't have much road. Still ain't got much road to here. <laughs> what's some of the more than, what's some of the biggest changes you've seen in this community? Well, lady, that would be hard for me to say just what was the biggest change. Uh, I don't know. Religiously or socially, I don't know what the biggest change is. But I, I don't know. It's, it, the change is great in the physical and spiritual. When you were, when you, uh, your early days as being a minister, uh, and you mentioned uh, the ministers had to work, did they pay so much for them being the preachers uh, at certain churches too? Well, I'll tell you, they did not uh, have any such salary. No, they didn't take up offerings like we do for our ministers today. I'd say the most of, oh, they, I wouldn't say there wasn't no offerings taken, but not to my observation. But most the pastors received was personally mm -hmm. what people wanted to give. There was no set price for them. No set price. When they had their baptizings, uh, the, did the whole community turn out for it? Or, oh, they or just... That'd be about one of our largest congregations we used to baptizing. Is that right? And still, we have pretty good attendance at the water's edge. Now, where do you baptize now? Same place? Do you, I mean, do you, is it down at the river down here? Oh, we uh, have baptized here back at the church, and this little creek we baptized down the city at the mouth of Little Helmet. Mm -hmm. And uh, most, and then we have baptized most of the baptism from this church here was taken care of down at the mouth of Little Helmet. Mm -hmm. Some churches are financially able to put a, a little, what is it called? Babstry. Babstry, yes, in their churches. That'd be nice, yeah. Be nice, I'm sure. 
uh, now, do, do they have the old-fashioned homecomings and church socials or picnics on the ground or whatever? Was that a fashionable thing at the Methodist church when you were growing up? Well, no, they, uh, the homecomings at the Methodist church was been since uh, in later years, later years. I don't know just how long that they had uh, homecomings at Greenwood, but for several years, but not in my early life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have never had nothing like it here at our church. Uh, what are some of the names of the, what they considered big preachers when you were a little boy? What were some of the names of the preachers that were pretty well known in this area? Well, some of the older ones that were ministers when I was a boy was the old man Nahu Tucker. Nahu Tucker. Yeah. Uh -huh. No man, Franklin Barker, and uh, that's that's the missionaries now that was here that was preached here in this community, and then uh, Brother Edgar Denny and Brother Lester Denny. And uh, Preacher Estrella, he was one of our community preachers, lived here in the Helton community. The only preacher we, we had in this uh, vicinity here, Little Helton, Big Helton, until I was ordained. Uh, what are some of the churches uh, that are no longer? Now, I know some of the churches throughout Ashe County, many of them are, um, have phased out or that, that kind of thing. What, do you recall any of the names of the churches that are, are out of existence now? Well, uh, Men of Baptist Church, uh, in the Long Branch community near Grassy Creek. It's the only Baptist church that I can recall now that has disbanded. That was the first church I ever belonged to. I joined that church June the 3rd, 1917. Mm -hmm. And I was a member there until about August 1923. I got my letter and come and was in the organization of this church here at Little Health on August 20th, 1923. And I was in the organization, the church was organized with five members. Five members. And I'm the only charter member left. Mm -hmm. You missed uh, World War One. I. I mean, you were too yeah, young too to young. go into it. Which you you mentioned your grandfather? You have a picture. Your great grandfather was your grandfather who was in the Civil War. That's right. Uh, what was his name? William. They call him Billy Waddell. William Waddell was uh -huh. his name. Yes, he went in at the beginning. You come out at the surrender. Never was wounded. And my. Grandfather on my mother's side was in the Civil War. What was his name? What was his name? He Pine Barker, William Pine Dexter. William Pine Dexter. Was he wounded? Was he wounded? No. Neither no. one wounded? They come both come out without being in any injury. Well. Uh, do you... Re now, did... Uh, we were interested too in any of the post offices. Have, do you know any of the? What was the, your post office here when you? Our were? post office always been Grassy Creek. Grassy Creek. Yes. They uh, 
And there's a post office, Hilton Post Office, just over the hill here after you come.